Episode 7 begins with the collapse of a beautiful witch who ran out of magical energy after burning too much trash with her fire magic. This angers Ryuda as he can't stand seeing someone push themselves so hard and risk their life for attention. Without hesitation, Ryuda shoots his sleep bullets at the witch, allowing her to rest peacefully. He does this out of both frustration and pity as it reminds him of his own past. Emily is surprised by Ryuda's action and asks what he used to put the witch to sleep. Ryuda explains that combining two healing bullets creates a sleep bullet, which was the best decision to save her if her energy had truly depleted. The witch wakes up and realizes it's almost evening reminding her of her duty to burn the towering trash pile. As she approaches the pile, she is shocked to see it transform into a group of Frankensteins. Feeling responsible for the trash, she intends to burn the approaching Frankensteins with her fire magic. However, Ryuda quickly shoots them down with his pistol from behind, saving her. Emily, who coordinates the trash disposal with the traitors, organizes an efficient cue for their destruction. Realizing that the witch has awakened, Emily approaches her. Ryuda follows behind and asks if she woke up because she was hungry. Emily surprises the witch with a prepared dinner for three. The witch tastes Emily's cooking and tears up from the delicious taste. Emily understands the situation as she experienced a similar one when she first met Ryuda, both pushing themselves too hard. The witch, named Celesta, is moved by Emily's story and laughs. Celesta explains the reason behind the influx of traitors and adventurers outside the cell and dungeon. The primary reason is the tax redrop items due to the ownership dispute of the dungeon. Also, the increasing number of adventurers and traders has resulted in more trash than usual. Ryuto offers to help her when he has some free time, understanding her situation. Celesta accepts his offer, stating it's the only thing she can do and immediately falls into a deep sleep due to her exhaustion. Ryuda and Emily are a bit surprised by how quickly she falls asleep, but they understand that sharing her story and having someone acknowledge her situation has lightened her burden. The next day, Celesta immediately starts burning the remaining trash piles outside the trading area. Ryuda is surprised by Celesta's powerful fire magic, which has improved significantly after she rested and fully regained her energy. Emily notices that Celesta looks fresher and even more beautiful than before. Celesta expresses her gratitude to Emily and Ryuda for helping her rest and allowing her magic to recover and become stronger. Emily advises Celesta not to be too reckless with her power when dealing with the towering piles of trash on her own. She suggests that Celesta takes a break and eats in Emily's tent, which she has set up to help maintain her magic energy. Celesta is delighted by the offer but feels hesitant about inconveniencing them. Emily reassures her and mentions that her unique skill allows her to carry camping equipment equivalent to a hotel, making it hard to resist once experienced even for just one night. Impressed by Emily's unique ability, Celesta decides to stay with them in Emily's luxurious tent. Ryuda informs them that he will be heading to the Sekro headquarters, and Emily will accompany him to the shopping area. Celesta can rest in the tent and join them later for lunch. Ryuda is amazed by the shopping area outside the Selen Dungeon, which resembles a market in a small town. Emily notices a jewelry vendor's stall and is immediately captivated by the jewelry on display. Ryuda is surprised because it's rare for people to buy jewelry in a place like this. The jewelry vendor mentions that many men come here to work and purchase jewelry as gifts for their wives. Ryuda, while browsing the vendor's items, is drawn to a ring priced at 1 million pilos, which he can't afford. Emily admires the jewelry and considers it special. She would be delighted if she could buy it. Later, Ryuda arrives at the Sekro headquarters and meets Duke, an important figure in the Dungeon Association Sekro. Without further ado, he presented the map of Dungeon Selon from floor 1 to floor 10, where the drop items on each floor vary significantly. On odd-numbered floors, vegetables would drop, while on even-numbered floors, meat would drop. In accordance with the circulating rumor, Ryudu, realizing that the distribution was even, found it difficult to make a decision based on that alone. The determining factor would be the results of drops from rare monsters. If they managed to collect more, it would be clear who the winner was. Ryuta, eager and wanting to enter the dungeon immediately, was restrained by Duke because they had already captured a rare monster on the vegetable floor and were waiting for Ryota to come and finish it off. Especially since there was an agreement between the Sekiro Dungeon Association and a monetary reward, they were only tasked with providing rare drop items. Ryota felt that this was a situation he had never experienced in his previous life, and the plans he had made for himself were worth a try. Then a member of the association came to inform them that the rare monster had been captured. They quickly headed to the first floor of Dungeon Selen to see it for themselves. Because the one who captured the rare monster was from the Sekiro Association, 
Ryota had the right to finish it off and was given time to think and plan something. Ryota noticed a group of strangers near the Sekro Association members. They were from the Hetero Association with Harvard positioned parallel to Duke and Eugene, an adventurer with the lowest drop rate growth, mean that defeating the monster wouldn't yield anything? Ryota was puzzled by why they would bother bringing an adventurer with such a low drop rate. They were tasked with defeating rare plant monsters that might not drop anything, leaving little chance for the Sekro Association to find rare drops. Ryota quickly understood the situation because they would sabotage swiftly if he didn't act first. Fortunately, the Sekro Association managed to outpace the Hetero Association's movements as they were confident that they would be the first to obtain a rare drop in Dungeon Selen. Without hesitation, Ryota successfully killed the rare, peculiar-shaped slime. However, the slime regenerated and grew larger each time it was defeated. Havard and Eugene, who were familiar with the slime's behavior, were confident they could capture it quickly because they knew the location of the slime's core. Ryota seemed to have figured something out as he loaded a control bullet into his firearm and waited for the right moment. Harvard, who had instructed Eugene to attack the slime, quickly pursued the slime, almost attacking its core. But Ryota, who had prepared for this, immediately fired his control bullet and managed to outpace Eugene. A rare drop item appeared, surprising Eugene because Ryota was able to locate the slime's core quickly without expending energy chasing it. Ryota, who had obtained the rare drop item of Soybean Sprout, gave the Sekiro Association an early advantage. Eugene, disappointed that he couldn't outdo Ryota, irritated Harvard and the Hetero Association members. They suggested taking a temporary retreat. Outside Dungeon Selen, Duke rewarded Ryota as promised. The substantial amount made Ryota feel uneasy as he had only helped obtain the rare drop. According to Duke, it was a fair amount because Ryota's contribution had borne fruit, and the rare drop could also be taken and sold at the trading post in Sekro. It felt like a windfall since he had only assisted in finding the rare drop item, Ryota couldn't believe it. Considering this could be a money-making opportunity, Ryota immediately explored Dungeon Selen to see what else he could find. Night fell, and Ryota returned to Emily's tent, recounting everything that had happened. He then presented a ring worth 1 million pilos to Emily as a token of his gratitude for her help thus far. Emily was greatly surprised by receiving such an expensive ring because she had always assisted Ryota and helped him from the moment they first met. According to Ryota, she fully deserved a gift like that. The gift from Ryota made Emily very happy. The next day, they returned to Dungeon Selen. Emily checked the effects of the ring she received from Ryota and found that it increased her drop item bonus points by one level compared to before. Ryota finally explained that the ring's experiment hadn't undergone significant changes. Emily knew Ryota's curious nature and his penchant for conducting experiments whenever he found something. Then they continued hunting and Emily wanted to test if the ring's effect would still apply when she killed the monsters. On the second floor, they encountered a treat monster and Emily immediately attacked it. When she defeated the treat, it dropped a chicken drumstick, which made Emily ecstatic because her animal drop item was ranked F. With the ring's effect, it improved to E, making it easier for her to obtain drop items with just a one-level change. Suddenly, a commotion erupted as a rare monster appeared on the second floor. Adventurers from Hetero instructed someone to find Harvard because they had located the rare monster. The rare monster turned out to be very aggressive and immediately attacked Emily. Since Emily was level 22, it didn't cause her too much pain, the attack seemed quite powerful. Ryota, who had been prepared to shoot, was halted because Harvard allowed Ryota to kill the rare monster. Harvard, resorting to his cunning tactics once again, attempted to bait Ryota into attacking the birded tree to drop a rare item. Quickly, Ryota decided against attacking it as he knew what would happen next, with another hetero adventurer possessing a special meat drop item ability equivalent to Ryota's, he had no choice but to make a decision. Emily, who'd read the situation, tossed her ring to Ryota and focused on attacking the bearded treat. This inspired Ryota to halt the bearded treat's movements with his ice bullet without harming the rare monster. He promptly fired the ice bullet and Emily struck it once. No drop item appeared, infuriating Harvard who left with the hetero group. After Emily had her ring returned, they returned to the outside of the dungeon area. Ryota met with Duke to report the discovery of the rare monster on the second floor. Since Duke had promised a reward for Ryota, the reward would be given to Emily because she had found it first. Duke informed them that Hetero's auxiliary adventurers would arrive tonight, and their numbers would be greater than those of Sekro's adventurers, which naturally concerned Duke. Their plan was to place all their adventurers with F-rank vegetable drop item abilities on the odd-numbered floors to sabotage the rare item drops. 
thus stopping Sekro's adventurous progress. Duke only knew one way to counter this, but Ryota suggested that they quickly conquer the third, fifth, seventh, and ninth floors and obtain rare drop items. This will at least balance the rare item acquisitions with hetero, increasing efficiency and technically winning. However, Ryota requested a total of 10 million pilos for each floor if he successfully obtained a rare drop item. Duke initially hesitated, but because Ryota would pay the same amount if he failed, he eventually agreed. Ryota was very confident in his drop item abilities and believed he could guarantee it. Duke thought long and hard before finally giving his approval. The next day they immediately searched for rare monsters on the third floor and successfully defeated the evil butterfly, which dropped Brussels sprouts. On the fifth floor, they defeated the danger panda, which dropped salted moss. Then, on the seventh floor, they defeated the rock golem, which dropped radish and dakin sprouts, much to Ryota's disappointment as he considered these rare drop items to be quite common for him. Finally, on the ninth floor, they encountered the rare monster Yamada no Orochi, an eight-headed serpent, which dropped enoki mushrooms, leaving Ryota thoroughly disappointed as these items were also considered common. Duke was very pleased with the results and promptly reported them to his superiors. Ryota felt that during his time working in his previous office, his suggestions were always rejected. However, Duke's approval of Ryota's request for 10 million pilos per rare item quickly earned him 40 million pilos. As he was about to return to the outside of the dungeon area, Ryota was intercepted by a group of hetero adventurers led by Eugen. According to Eugene, Ryota's actions went too far and hindered hetero's chances of winning the competition, which ultimately led them to sabotage Ryota directly. Eugene had ordered a witch to prevent Ryota from using magic. Ryota, nearly outnumbered, managed to defeat them with his bare hands. Eugene assumed that Ryota wouldn't be able to use magic due to the negative effects imposed by the witch, which were identical to the previous magic storm. However, Ryota was not affected since he was not a magic user. After defeating them all, Ryota promptly healed them with his healing bullets. As Ryota walked back to the surface, he warned Eugene and his group that if they ever wanted to challenge him again, he would be ready to oblige at any time and would heal them if they lost because someone would be waiting for them to return. In the evening when Ryota returned to the tent, he was welcomed by Emily and Celesta.